Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video I will attempt to create a program that can predict if the price of a stock will increase or decrease. Now before we begin writing the program it would be great if you could hit that like button and become a subscriber to the channel if you're not already. Now currently I'm on Google's website it's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python so you do not have to install Python onto your computer all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. Alright so let's begin writing this program. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is click on file and then click on new notebook and a new tab open up for you and then eventually a new cell will open up as well. Okay so now I have this cell and in this cell I'm going to put in some comments because I like to know what this program is about before I write any logic for the code. So I'm just going to put this program uses a machine learning algorithm called and I'm going to use a machine learning algorithm called a decision tree to predict if the price of a stock will increase or decrease okay so basically my question is you know is tomorrow's close price going to be higher or lower than today's close price that's what I'm trying to predict alright so let's go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left and in this cell I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout this program so from sklearn.model underscore selection I'm going to import train underscore test underscore split next from sklearn.tree I'm going to import the decision tree classifier okay next I'm going to import numpy as np and I'm going to import pandas as pd all right Next, I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left, and this will let us know if we have any errors. All right, so we don't have any errors. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to load the data. So I'm going to load the stock data that I have. And because I'm on Google's website, I need to use Google's library. So from google.colab, I'm going to import files. And then I'm just going to type files.upload to upload the file. So let's go ahead and run this cell and then click on choose files and here we go all right so i'm going to go ahead and upload this amzn.csv file so that's the amazon stock file it's a csv file that contains data on amazon stock so let's go ahead and create a new cell now that i have that file uploaded and now i want to store that data to a variable so here i'm going to put store the data into a variable so I'm going to create a variable called df, which is short for a data frame, and I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore csv, and then I'm going to give it the name amzn.csv, so we're going to get that csv file that we just now uploaded, and then let's take a look at it, so I'm just going to type df here, so let's go ahead and run this, and maybe I'll put some comments there saying show the data, alright, so now we can take a look at the data, and we can see that we have the date, the open price, the high price, the low price, the close price, the adjusted close price, and the volume. Okay, and then we can see that we have the index here to the left, and I want to change that. So let's go ahead and and set the date as the index instead of those numbers, instead of those integer values. So I'll put for the data. And in order to do this, just type df and set it equal to df.set underscore index and then type pd dot date time index. Okay. And then I need to tell it what I what column I want to use. So just type df and then I want to use the date column and then type dot values. We want an array. Okay. And that should change the the index here to the date so let's go ahead and run this okay so now you can see that the index is indeed the date so next I want to give the index a name so just type df.index.name and set it equal to date 
so let's go ahead and run this and now I have the name for the index as the date so that looks really good and I guess I'm just going to leave it like this for now we're going to continue manipulating this data a little bit more so let's go ahead and create a new cell and I'm going to bring this cell on up okay and here again I'm going to manipulate the data some more okay so I want to create a new column right I want to create a target column in this data set that will tell us if tomorrow's price indeed increased or decreased so in order to do that I will use the values 1 for increase for letting us know that the value did increase and then the value 0 letting us know that the the closing price did not increase okay so I'm going to use the closing price for this so let's go back down here and let's create that target column and that will make this a classification problem so here I'm just going to put create the target column so just type DF and then let's give that column a name so I'm going to call it price up so this will be our target column this is what we're trying to predict all right and I'm going to set it equal to MP dot where the DF close dot shift negative one so this is this is tomorrow's close price where that is greater than today's close price which is DF close if this is true then I'm going to return one so what this is saying is if to if tomorrow's close price is greater than today's close price return the value one else return the value zero okay so it should be that simple and also I want to get rid of this column here this date column so let's go back down here and let's get rid of it let's drop it so here we're going to remove the date column in the data set so just type DF and set it equal to DF dot drop columns and set this equal to the date column because I don't need it all right and then let's show the data so just type DF here and let's run this okay so now we can see this new column here called price up and let me scroll up a little bit more for you and this will tell us if tomorrow's price is higher or lower than today's close price so let's take a look at the close price here we can see it's 1953.949951 and tomorrow's close price is actually lower so here the value will be zero okay and now if we look at this row we see the close price is about 1908.989990 and tomorrow's close price is actually higher it is 1975.829956 so over here we should have the value one and indeed we do okay so that looks really good we can also see that the date column is gone all right so I think that looks good and let's go ahead and create a new cell all right I'm gonna bring this on up okay so in this cell I want to split the data or split the data set into a feature data set and a target data set okay so I'm gonna create some variables I'm going to use the variable X for the feature data set and I'm gonna set it equal to DF dot and I want all of the rows and I want all of the columns except for that target column so I want all the columns from from index 0 or the zeroth column to the to the second to last column so that's going to be to DF dot shape at position 1 right so that gives us the number of columns minus 1 all right because I don't want that last column and then I want this to be an array so I'm going to put dot values and now I'm going to create my 
Y data set. This will be the target data set. And I want df.ilock. Okay, so I want all of the rows and I only want one column. That's going to be the target column. And I could just put the position of that target column. So that's at position df.shape, uh, position one, minus one. Okay, and then put dot values here to make an array, and that should do it. Okay, so this should create the target and feature data set for us. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a run. All right, that looks good. Let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I am going to split the data again, but this time into 80% training data set. Or I should put 80% yes training and 20% testing in data sets. All right, so let's create some variables. So I'm gonna create a variable called x underscore train, x underscore test, y underscore train, y underscore test. And I think that'll do it. And I'm gonna set this equal to train underscore test underscore split. And they're gonna input the feature data set and input the target data set and then give it a test size. So because I want it to be 20%, I'm gonna put 0.2 here. And that should split the data for us. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, and let's create a new cell. Now in this cell, I'm going to create the, well, let's see here. I'm gonna create and train the model. So the model is the decision tree classifier. All right, so I'm gonna create a variable called tree and I'm gonna set it equal to decision tree classifier dot fit and fit is just another name for for train and we're going to train it on the training data so that's x underscore train and y underscore train okay and then i want to then i want to show show how well the model did on the test data set. So I'm just going to type tree or actually print and then tree dot score and we're going to input the test data. So that's x underscore test and y underscore test. Okay. So this will let us know how well the model did on the test data. All right. So that's it. Let's go ahead and run this cell. All right. So we can see that the model got a score of about 66.67%. I'm just rounding up a little bit. And that's fine, it's better than guessing. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. Okay. And now in this cell, I want to show the model or the model's predictions. So just type tree underscore predictions and this will store the tree's predictions. So type tree dot predict and I want to see the values that it predicted for the test data. So just type in X test into the parameter there and then let's print the tree underscore predictions and let's run this. Okay, and now we can see the values that the model predicted for the next, let's see, I think it's nine days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it is. And so let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's show, let's show the actual values in the test data set. So just type Y underscore test and let's run this. Okay, so we can see what the model predicted up top here and what the actual values are down here. So it looks like the model got it right, um, basically, or it looks like the model got three out of nine wrong and two out of nine, or sorry, uh, six out of nine correct. So, so this looks good. So we can see it got the first one correct, the second one correct, the third, 
the fourth um, it got this value here incorrect and it got this value incorrect let me make sure yes uh, yes so it got that value incorrect and then it got this value here incorrect so the model did okay um, this is actually better than guessing but again this is just me running the model one time and using only a small amount of data so a lot more testing needs to happen so be sure to take this with a grain of salt as they say and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you can use it for educational purposes and if you're not a subscriber again please subscribe to the channel uh, that's it we're done creating this program so thank you for watching and a big thanks to the patrons on patreon.com for supporting this channel if you want to become a supporter as well i will leave a link in the description below for you and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next video